Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text is the Gospel reading today. Although it was hard to pick that when 1 Corinthians chapter 13 was the epistle, the love chapter. But this is the one that I chose. And there's a lot going on in the Gospel today. Jesus begins in a town near his own hometown of Nazareth, which we heard about last week. Capernaum, it's, in, it's also in Galilee, the northern area of what we think of as Israel. And he winds up at the very end, preaching in the synagogues of Judea, the southern part of what is now we know of as Israel. One thing you hear over and over in this pericope, and throughout the Gospels, is that Jesus taught with authority. It's mentioned several times in our text. He didn't preach like a lot of the other people that they were used to hearing preach. It amazed them because he preached as one who had authority. It was different than the kind of preaching they were used to. Authority derives from power. Authority speaks from its own center of power and can act upon that authority to enforce or make things happen. For example, when those blue lights flash in your rearview mirror, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. At this point, you're presented with a choice. <coughs> You can yield to the authority the easy way, or you can yield to the authority the hard way. Those are your two choices. But either way, you're going to yield. <laughs> it's always wisest to yield to legitimate authority. But it is on occasion entertaining and sometimes even hilarious when people don't. It's also sometimes sad and tragic. I don't know what it is, but when I turn the channels and I hear that that tune, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come from? I, I'm hooked. Because <laughs> it's fun to watch people make the wrong choice sometimes and watch them yield to authority the hard way. It's also a good lesson. I don't want to do that. I know that when I'm put on the ground, it's very hard to get up. <laughs> I'd rather stay standing. They always think that they're going to get away, though. Have you noticed that? Hmm. Maybe if I run, I'm going to get away. <laughs> never works out. You cannot escape authority. Every creature is under authority. Ultimately to God, whether they realize it or not. Every creature is under the authority of God, and they're under the authority of others. Various different authorities appointed among men, but again, by God. <coughs> Ultimately, authority on earth is given by God, and rebellion of legitimate authority is then, by relation, rebellion against God. <coughs> Jesus preached differently and acted differently. He spoke as if he had authority over sin and disease and ailments of both body and soul. And things visible and invisible were his to command. He spoke that way, and he acted that way, and it was amazing. In Mark chapter 2, starting at verse 9, we have this story, where Jesus tells a man laying on a mat who is an invalid, cannot walk, 
Your sins are forgiven you. And people began to grumble and to say, who is this man who says your sins are forgiven? Only God can forgive sins, right? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus says, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth, I tell you, take your mat, get up and walk. Guess what happened? He got up and he walked. You know why? Because Jesus had authority to forgive sins and to make the man walk. Jesus demonstrates the connection between the word and the power of his authority. If you doubt my authority to forgive sins, allow me to show you my authority. And he does, over and over and over again. If the chief problem of man is sin, as the Bible suggests rather strongly, then, and it's responsible for all the wrongs in society, not just climate change, creeping socialism, not even war or crime or the Democrats or the Republicans. But if sin is the real issue, then the authority to forgive sins is the answer for the world. Does it lie in this plan of the House or that plan of the Senate or this plan of the President or these plans of the new young people in authority? But it rests in the authority to forgive sins in the world. When Jesus left here, he said something about authority. You know it very well. But I'm going to read it to you again. It's in the 28th chapter of Matthew. Where he says these words. All authority in heaven and on earth. How much authority? All. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the earth. Authority from Christ has been given to you. It has been given to you for the good of the world. And that is power. Power to change the hearts of people and the direction of their lives. Listen, when I stand up here at the beginning of the service and forgive your sins, I don't do that by my own authority. I don't have any authority to forgive your sins. I got enough problem with my own sins. <laughs> but by the authority and the power of Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins, and that's why I say, in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I'm acting by His command. Therefore, it is just as good as if He has said it to you Himself. Your sins are forgiven objectively, for real. Because on one particular Friday, God in human flesh was nailed to a cross outside the city walls of Jerusalem. And when he died, he, because he had no sin, was able to cover our sin with his righteousness. And he died, shedding his blood for us. That we could stand justified before the great judge of all creation. His blood is ours and cleanses us 
And now because of his blood, his father is now our father. Jesus, the last and ultimate sacrifice for sin, to which all the blood of sacrifices of tabernacle and temple testify, was objectively paid. He has paid the price for the forgiveness of all people you ever meet, everywhere. And by faith, the believer takes hold of his promise, the promise of forgiveness, and receives exactly what is promised. Forgiveness. Restoration. Freedom from your sins. And from its consequence. In this place, here, these four walls, in and through word and sacrament, that is what God delivers by His own authority to us. And I am privileged to be the instrument through which God offers His authority and power to forgive sins in this place. And likewise, are given His authority, He has given His authority to you and His power to proclaim forgiveness and to actually forgive the sins of the world. One more verse from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. And just one verse. Verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He gives this authority to His church, to you, to forgive the sins of all who believe. So in your lives, in your work, at home, at school, with your neighbors, with those whom you meet, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives, and liberty for those who are caught in sin's dread harm. In this place, God offers this to you. And in the world, He offers it through you. Go then. He has set you free, that you might set others free. And as He said to Jeremiah in the Old Testament, you say the words I have given you to say. Do the things I have given you to do. And I will be with you. Amen. Amen.